Hello from Gardening at Twensa here in Ireland and it's the 19th of April today so full cherry blossom viewing time here at Twensa and the cherry blossoms are looking absolutely magnificent at the moment. Now it's a bit of a dull day today, it's been raining so everything is nice and fresh but we're going to take a little jaunt around the garden and see all those glorious spring flowers that are bursting forth. So come on with me. So today we're going to start off with the pan of the side of the garden here, the bit that kind of stretches from the driveway and you can see these arches which are the entrances to the garden there and the very good news and the real sign that summer is on the way is the fact that the beech hedge down there has started to drop its dead leaves and to push out fresh new green ones and even the birch trees up above are just coming into leaf. Okay, can we go to the garden? Can you hear that buzzing there? There are a great number of bumblebees going about their business at the moment, which is very, very welcome. And we're just taking a little shot of well a group of bushes really with the cherry blossom in the background and this is a beautiful cherry blossom my most mature one and yeah it's just looking super at the moment so many flouncy bouncy double, double pink flowers really gorgeous and this was joshy's favorite tree here in the garden just in front of the cherry blossom tree in this part of the garden we have a tree peony that's just coming into flower at the moment and can you see down below the pink which is the rhododendron so this is a tree peony and it is a glorious mass of flowers this year so many buds coming and they're just barely open here at the moment and it's contrasted with this pinky rhododendron, Virginia Richards. Now this is just, just opening and it's one of my favourites. Not my absolute favourite, but we'll come to my absolute favourite rhododendron at some stage during this garden tour. I'm just noticing something a bit quirky about this rhododendron and it's to do with the buds. And there are the buds just about to open. So let's just go in closer and have a look at this one. And can you see that? It's acting as like a live fly paper because there are loads and loads of little gnats just stuck to it and dead. And this story is repeated all over the rhododendron. Now I can't say I ever noticed that before. And well, I suppose, I mean, I am not aware of lots of little annoying flies in the garden, but maybe it's the rhodo that saves me from them. And beside the rhododendron we have one of my resident gargoyles. And this one is Miss Anthropy to give her her correct title. And she actually may be on the move because I have a, another place where she would better be placed. And this here is Dr. Acula and he surveys this particular bed here. Now I'm thinking of moving the gargoyles and I'll show you why where I intend to put them just in a few moments. Now behind we have the wonderful podophyllum Spotty Dotty and I think it's Spotty Dotty anyway. I kind of lost my labels over time. But this is an American woodland plant and it's grown for its leaves because the flowers are quite hidden when they come out. They kind of droop down underneath the leaf canopy but the markings on the leaf are really quite interesting. And just beside it we have various woodland plants, Dysporum, and then this wood anemone down here which is closed because we don't have any sun. And this is anemone, Nemorosa, Robinsoniana. And I love the wood anemones, absolutely love them. 
This is an Irish cultivar and a very, very pretty plant, but as I say, not showing its best just at the moment because of the lack of sunshine. So just turning around over here, past the big euphorbia and past the fatsia green fingers that I planted last year, we have this lovely shrub. Um, I want to say Sobralia, but that's an orchid, isn't it? Anyway, it has the most gorgeous, gorgeous foliage. Now, some people said this is quite a runner, but that's not been my experience. And the pink coming out on top of the pale yellow, I think, is just a fantastic contrast. Now, normally I don't like pink and yellow together, but this is okay. This is good. It's a kind of a salmon, I suppose, a salmon colour. And just beyond it over there is where we've been playing croquet. See the croquet hoops? Very fancy and I'm sure we don't play it right, but it's a fun thing to do when the when it's a nice sunny day. A sneak peek over here at another wood anemone and this is my absolute favourite of them all. And when it comes more fully into flower I think I might make a video just about wood anemones because I love this, love, love, love it to bits. And just moving over here, I'll give you a bit of a pan, but there's that Sobralia bush, Sobraria bush just there we were just looking at, cherry tree just above us, and then turning around where the box hedging is, oh bad news there, I'll tell you about it in a minute, and then just swinging around even further where we have Sam's birth tree, my son Sam's birth tree looking very very big and tall and meaty at the moment. The edge of the garden you can see by the hedge there which has recently been trimmed and my husband did a great job on it. It's looking really great and then just here where I was weeding just very recently and you will see a very big fatsia just in front of you. And I am seriously considering getting rid of this fatsia. It's just a blob with kind of uninteresting leaves and you have to spend a long time on it to get it to look decent, removing at least a third of the leaves. Otherwise it just, it bunches together in this very unsightly arrangement. Yeah, so I think I'm going to do that. There's another fatsia just beyond it over there. Let's see if we can zoom in. And this is a more mature, bigger one. There we go. And I think that's fine. I'm going to leave that. Still have to do a lot of work every year, just removing a lot of leaves. But that one can stay. It has a bit of shade as well, which helps just make the leaves more the true green colour. Whereas this one here is really quite yellowish because, well, it's in the open garden. And I think an important lesson here is we need to look at our gardens with a critical eye and decide what just isn't working and be ruthless. So just a swing past that long border where I planted out the lily bulbs and the galtonia in a recent video. I'm coming around here to the arm with a lot of snowdrops planted in it just to see these tulips. Now this is Tulipa purissima and it has come back for me for very many years. All tulips, of course, over time, they get smaller and they disappear and you do need to replace them. Some stay much better than others, but this is definitely one that stays for a long time. And look at those big, big flowers. And I think this autumn, I'm definitely going to invest in more tubes for the garden. Last autumn, the focus was on putting in the new hedging and the new structure in the garden, and that's where the money went. But this autumn, it has to be down to tulips. And there's something else just over here that I want to show you on this arm of the border, past the holly. And I think we can't see it unless we go and stand around that other side just there. And this is Glaucidium palmatum, I think. A gorgeous choice woodlander. It's kind of closing its flowers today because of the lack of sun, but it's really a sweet thing. The only thing is that the slugs do tend to like it, so you need to be careful. 
but this year it's 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 been okay yeah you can see some bite marks there in that particular leaf and there's bad news here with my box balls and if we look closely you can see that the dreaded box blight has decided to pay me a visit it's a bit upsetting because this area here was planted by my son Josh when he was in primary school and very proud of his strength um, yeah he was just at that age where I guess a boy begins to feel that he is powerful and he dug all of these holes to put these box balls in for me and it's a very stony area so it would be a shame to lose it but I have a recommendation for from a friend of a treatment that has worked for her and I intend to try that and I guess we will have success I hope we will anyway and if you're ever looking for a vigorous primrose with very pretty flowers then I highly recommend this one it's called Avondale and it has really pretty flowers with these kind of pale pink petals and white stripes and a yellow and orange eye very nice now it's just going over now it's not looking its best but about a week ago this whole hedge of primrose was a mass of flowers and it looked amazing and I have so much of it now I'm thinking of dividing it and spreading it about in different places so let's take a walk up the garden now and we will cross through to this other section there and have a look at where I've recently been working with the carnivorous plants but before we go and see that let's have a look at these hellebores here that are looking really super now they're planted beneath some very tall tetrapanix rex which has been defoliated in winter but soon it will bring back its enormous umbrella like leaves and it's flanked to the left by these really tall lilies that stand up by themselves and don't need staking and produce beautiful scented flowers in summer but at the moment this hellebore is the main attraction in this border and it has these nodding flowers that really are very very architectural and evergreen leaves that persist the longest time it needs a little bit of staking but it makes a nice bushy clump and seeds about a bit like most hellebores do really and past the hellebore bed that has this great big viburnum about to flower in the middle of it. See there's more hellebores there. And over through this kind of entrance here into this other part of the garden. And before I forget there are a couple of little beauties down here I want to share with you in the hellebore bed. And the hellebores as you can see are in here. And take a look at this. Now these are just going over now but aren't they cute? This is Umphaloides starry eyes, an Irish cultivar, and it has these blue centers and a kind of white edge to the flowers. And it's a little doat, doesn't come true from seed. To my right, I have the formium that was moved last autumn, and it really is doing well. I think it's gonna stay no problem. And the border just continues over this way. A lot of uh, Cynara and double geranium in that particular border. And of course, just to the right there is Magnolia Star Wars coming to the end of its flowering. But what I really wanted to show you is over to the left. Now, here we have it. And if you saw my moving Saracenia planters video, then you'll recognize these as the planters for my carnivorous plants which are all actually in there and will soon be in full leaf and you will notice that everything has been taken out of the border I have big piles of persicaria there that's been lifted and it was really really hard to lift we had to put weed killer on it and then it could come out and this border used to be my new wave perennial style border made a video about it a while ago but it had become overgrown with a lot of scotch grass which is very difficult to see and detect because of the nature of the plants in it and um, anyway we decided to do away with it 
if a border isn't working then you need to be brave and just overhaul. So this summer I'll be planting up this border. I haven't quite decided what I am going to do yet but it'll be fun. And that Easter Island head there, he's going to move. I don't think he fits in with the style of what this border is going to be. And this is actually the area that I'm thinking of moving my gargoyles to because I have plenty of space and I think a gargoyle theme is going to be very well in fitting with the Saracenia or carnivorous plant theme. And down here we have a lovely woodland plant that I want to show you. It's this gorgeous Lathyrus. As you can see the flowers are just opening now. They will open further and look great but for the moment you just get a taste of the glorious orange colour that they will be. And just beyond we have the Hakisha that had gorgeous pretty little flowers earlier on the season. You'll have seen it in previous garden tours and that's what the flowers look like. But now it's just a mass of beautiful variegated leaves. And the borders are really beginning to waken up now with lots of primroses and pretty little things. This fern is gorgeous as it unfurls. And this is one that's akin to tree ferns, although it's perfectly hardy. And that is an enormous advantage when you want to just plant things in your garden and not worry about them. It looks so so pretty when the ferns are there, when the filigree leaves are out. And over here we have, well, four plants that are looking just fabulous at the moment. On the left we have the red acer, a dwarf acer, and its leaves are just fantastic aren't they? It's a slow growing plant so I'll enjoy it for as long as I possibly can in this position. They don't move well unfortunately. And beside it we have this amazing euphorbia that I've pointed out before. And look at those acid green bracts on top of deep red stems and dark dark leaves. I think it just has everything going for it. And directly behind it we have magnolia stellata which is just at the end of its flowering so this is the magnolia super super flowers and here we have macrantha exocodra the bride unless i'm very much mistaken with its pendulous white flowers not scented, but beautiful all the same. And it's flanked by this tree peony, which has a lot of buds this year. This is the most open of them, and you can see that silky pink silkiness inside there, just waiting to burst out with beautiful large petals. And here we have the stone table that has already had a few board games and a few snacks. Mostly just a cup of tea because it is still quite cold. And the tulips are here. So this one is called Banya Luca and you can see that it's a good one. It came back for me for many years but I have very few of them now at the moment and I did want to replace them but um, as you know the hedging took priority last autumn so maybe next year. But whenever I see them in spring, it's just, oh, aren't they gorgeous? I so need so many more tulips in my life. You really couldn't have enough of them. And speaking of tulips, do you see behind there in the border beside the greenhouse, we have lots more tulips over there. However, I don't want to dwell on this border because, as you know, I'm making a separate series, A Year in the Life of a Border, and this is the border I've chosen to talk about each month. So I don't want to steal its glory by covering stuff already in this video that I'll cover in the one that's to come soon. And this is the back of that border with the Banyaluca tulips and the stone table. And we just swing around here. You can see the wedding cake tree is now in leaf. 
but the semicircular beech hedge behind it is not, although it's started to drop its leaves, so it's coming. This Lanicera hedge could do with the cut. That's not one that got cut. And then just down here we have a well a kind of a woodlandsy border with lots of pretty things coming out. Everyone's favourite is the snake's head fritillaria and I guess it gets its name because its flesh is very like a snake's flesh in that it has that kind of patterning on it but it's a beautiful beautiful little plant and I see mine has set lots of seed down here now this is one I have tried to grow from seed myself I think it takes seven years to actually come into flower so it is the long haul and I wonder is it worth it when it will self seed around like this and just propagate itself on its own this primrose is drum cliff and I used to have a lot of it in here but not so much these days but it's a very pretty thing and behind it you can see all that green stuff that's been kind of cut back to the ground and that's my pachyphragma and don't worry it'll be back you just need to cut this one hard back after it finishes flowering so it doesn't seed around you can tell it's a vigorous plant at the front here we have an ornithogallum oh, and a little fritillaria that's decided to pop up just here. Hello! And this ornithogallum is covered in little white flowers. And I actually love the habit of it. The leaves don't detract from the flowers at all. It just makes a very elegant mass. We have a scylla here behind. And that moss you see in the background is on the roots of the big cherry tree. I was out here walking with my daughter this morning and do you know what she said? She said her favourite plant is the moss. In my hardy orchid bed we do have Cypripedium poking up. And as I stand here there are delicious wafts coming to me on the breeze. And I'm just turning around now to see where that comes from. I know where it's coming from. It's coming, of course, from Rhododendron, Lady Alice Fitzwilliam. If you only have space for one Rhododendron and you have suitable climate and soil, then I highly, highly recommend this one. It has the most amazing scent. Beautiful, beautiful flowers and the leaves. The leaves really are quite refined for Rhodo leaves. Rhodo leaves in general aren't aren't a great selling point unless you're talking about the really big species ones. Lots of buds here. Now what do you think Lady Alice? Does she sound like a rapper? My son said she sounds like a rapper. And before we wrap up this video, just giving you a pan across the very back of the garden. And that's the Pieris in red flower at the moment. We have the Stipa Gigantia, which has put on lots of leafy growth since it was cut back. Cute little sedum there. And this is the kind of meditation area. And those who are perceptive will note that the wall has actually grown in size since we last looked at this. Now this is a dry stone wall that I have here just for aesthetics. We found rocks around the garden and just did a job of building up the wall. My daughter did that mostly. So it's good to put to use what you have in your garden. And I do have a lot of stone. Here's a great tree for bark. And just look at that beautiful peeling bark. Which is why I bought this tree in the first place. And down at its feet we have a very pretty erythronium display. Now this erythronium is a cross and it produces lots and lots of seedlings which I've harvested and used elsewhere in the garden. Pretty, pretty thing. So I guess that brings me to about the end of the video. I'm just panning over here to get a final look at the Iberus, which is that white plant there. And my son informed me that it's, it's his favourite plant in the garden at the moment, so I couldn't finish the video without showing you it. But 
anyway thank you very much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you'll check back for lots more gardening videos i hope you're enjoying your gardening time in isolation and see you on the next video